Praise God. Well, praise the Lord. Well, I ministered last Sunday. Anybody remember the message on last Sunday that I ministered on mercy? Where your faith won't take you, God's mercy will, and God is merciful. And I want to kind of continue in that. Uh, the, the title of this sermon today is The Power of Love. And, um, and so that, that's connecting with God's mercy. You know, God is a God of love. And I'm going to say this, that, you know, Christianity, you know, some would say that's a religion. But, uh, and it could qualify as a religion. I understand that technically. But really, true Christianity is a relationship. And so really, it's a relationship with God, our Father, through His Son, Jesus Christ, a relationship with Jesus. And um, so really, everything is really based on, uh, you know, our, our theology, our faith is really based on relationship. You know, God is all about relationship. He's all about us having good relationships. And really, uh, you can really look at our lives and you can find that when our life start, you know, when we have a tendency for when our life starts going down, we can, we can really, um, you can really look at some things in your life. You can see where your relationship is, is, might be missing either with God or with others. I call it either we, we're, we're missing it on vertical love or we're missing it on horizontal love. And vertical love is our love with the Father. And then horizontal love is our love in relationship with other people. And so really, it's, you know, Christianity, true Christianity, and Jesus taught a, uh, a religion based on relationship. A relationship, really, with our Heavenly Father. Um, you know, there's a scripture, there's scripture in the Bible uh, that says this. Uh, one man came to Jesus and asked, what's the greatest commandment? And Jesus said, the greatest commandment is to love your Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, if you do those two things, you fulfill the entire law of the prophets. You know, instead of us trying to keep the Ten Commandments... Uh, you know, and, you know, it's good. You know, the Ten Commandments are great. I'm not saying throw out the Ten Commandments. But what Jesus, Jesus was going on a higher commandment, walk in love. Because, you know, we can follow rules legalistically and not have any love in our hearts. Oh, man, did I go there? <laughs> did I go there? You can follow a legalistic rule, I shall not, shall not, shall not, but have no love in our hearts. And I don't know if that's going to do you any good. <laughs> In, in other words, God wants us not following him in a legalistic sense or, you know, legally, hey, I'm coming to church. I'm paying my tithes and I pray and I read the Bible every once in a while. God has to bless me. And no, you know, it's all about heart attitude. God's always looking at our hearts. He's looking at why we do things. Uh, he's looking at our motives. And, and that's big time for God. And it's all about, look at your neighbor and say, it's all about relationship. So it's all about our relationships. And you'll find that uh, what the enemy will work on constantly, he's trying to get us in, um, uh, in opposition with other people, with groups. Have you ever noticed that? He's always trying to get us angry with somebody. And uh, either, you know, he, he will try to work division in our families. Amen. Anybody ever, anybody, you know, spouses out here, you ever get in an argument with your spouse? Amen. Your children, you know, he tries to get problems with the, with the kids, you know. And uh, so, you know, this is, the, this is the key right here. Unity, I'm going to say this, unity is a key to the blessings of God in our life. Unity with God, the Father, and unity with other people. And so that's the, you know, the commanded blessing in Psalms 133. You can, you can study that out, but you'll find the commanded blessing is on unity. And that's unity with God, our Father, and unity with other believers, and walking in love towards other believers. Amen. So we have to operate in, in the love walk. The Bible says that faith worketh by love. And we know we cannot please God without faith. But the key component, one of the key components to faith is love. So if your love is not working, then your faith is not working. Let's look at a scripture here in the book of Mark. Let's look at Mark 11. And uh, Mark 11 Verse 22, and this is what a lot of scholars will say is the, the great faith chapter. This is um, keys of walking in mountain-moving faith, how to operate in the faith of God is, is Mark 11. And, uh, and we see this, uh, and Jesus talks about, you know, great faith. And in chapter 11 of Mark, Jesus curses the fig tree, he spoke words, and the fig tree withered, and then... Peter, the next day, Peter seen that the fig tree withered. 
And let's look at um, 21. And Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you curse has withered. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. And, um, and it says, for sure, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain. So he's talking about faith principles here. And be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done. He will have whatsoever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you have received them and you'll have them. Now, these are faith principles that we can go with talking about believing, talking about speaking. And, um, and it's great faith principles. Uh, you can't have what you say, basically. You can have what you say. And a lot of people are, 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 are saying things, and they're saying, you know, the things that they don't want. In other words, you say you're broke, and we're broke, uh, I never get out of debt, and that's what you're having. But if you start speaking to the mountain, speaking to your debt, you can command that debt to go away, amen? In other words, you can command debt to leave, you can speak to it. So that, that's not my message today, but let's continue here. And, say, and let's look at this. It says here, this is where I want to focus in on. Because faith is great and faith will move the hand of God. But your faith will be short-circuited if it's not motivated by love. If your faith is not motivated by love, the, the, the power of love. Love is the motivational force, should be the motivational force behind our faith or our actions, what we do. What we do should be motivated out of love, not out of selfish ambition or, or out of selfishness. It should be motivated out of love. Everything we, sh we, we do as Christians should be motivated out of the God kind of love. Now, here in verse 25, it says, Whatever you, whenever you stand. Now, this is connected to this, these faith principles on speaking to your mountain, not doubting in your heart, believing what you say will come to pass. It shall come to pass. And then he connects this, and it seems like it's totally out of context. You know, it, 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 well, he was just talking about prayer and speaking the mountain. Now he's talking about forgiveness. This is a key to walking in great faith. If you can't get this down, you're never going to walk in great faith. If you can't get your love walked down, you, your faith will be hindered. Are you listening to me today? Amen. We've got to get the love walked down. Now let's look at this. It says here, whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. That your Father in heaven may also forgive you of your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you of your trespasses. That's a pretty powerful statement there. So he's saying here, whenever you stand praying or speaking to your mountain or uh, believing God, that you have to, if you have anything against anyone, if there's somebody that did you down and dirty, did you wrong, amen, if somebody offended you, hurt you. He said, we, we, we need to forgive that person. Amen. We need to forgive that person that, you know, offended us. You're either going to be the offender or the offendee. Amen. Has anybody ever offended anybody in here? Amen. Maybe not meaning to. Okay. You know, sometimes we offend people we don't mean to offend them. Amen. We offend them and it, it, we, we're not even aware that we're, we're the offender. Amen. And then sometimes we're the offendee. In other words, somebody does something to offend us. Amen. And so we see here, this says, whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you of your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you of your trespasses. So, so we have to think about this, that, um, that our forgiving, us forgiving other people is connected to God forgiving us. Amen. Boy, it's quiet in here. In other words, Jesus said it this way. What you've done unto the least of these, you've done unto me. How we treat other people, we're actually treating God that way. Amen. If, in other words, if you're a Christian and you treat another Christian bad, they're the body of Christ, you're treating Christ bad. Amen. Is that right? If you treat somebody that's in the body bad, you're, you're treating, but if you do, but on the opposite end, on the opposite side, if you're treat, walking in love to your, towards your brothers and sisters, you're walking in love towards God. Amen. Isn't that right? 
If you're walking in love and you're, and you're walking in love towards one another, if you're walking in love towards your brothers and sisters, you're walking in love towards Christ. Amen. What you've done unto the least of these, you've done unto me. So how we treat other people uh, is the key. Is that's what God's looking at. He's looking at how we're treating other people. How are we viewing other people? Are we, you know, are we treating people bad or, or, or you know, and, and that, that's, an, that's an attitude. We need to work on our attitudes in this area. and We all have to work on that. Part of working on that attitude is understanding the mercy of God for us. Understanding how God had, has mercy on us. When we were dead in our trespasses, the Bible says, Christ died for us. Right? And so while we were dead in our trespasses, while we were going the wrong way, Jesus died for us. We need to get a revelation of what Jesus went through to obtain, for, for God, to, to, for us to be able to attain God's love. We need to get a revelation that Jesus paid a very hard price for us to have a relationship with God. We think, you know, we think, well, Jesus was the son of God. It was an easy task for him. No, it was not easy for Jesus. Jesus paid a tough price so that we could have a relationship with God. Jesus endured hostility. Jesus, the Bible says that everything that we experience as human beings being betrayed. You ever, anybody been betrayed in here? You, you put your trust and your confidence in someone and all of a sudden you got a knife in your back. <laughs> oh, oh, you know, oh, they hurt so good, you know. Oh, you know, they, they're patting you, you know, they're, they're, the Judas kiss, they give you that kiss. And you know why they put a knife in your back? <laughs> Have you ever been there? Amen. And you gave them everything, and, they, and then what did they do? <laughs> and you got that knife in your back, and oh, help me, Lord. And what, is, and what do we want to do? We want to retaliate, retaliate, don't we? We want to talk about them. We want to talk about how bad they are, Amen. what they did to us. Amen. But, but you know what? Sometimes we look at ourselves with rosy, with rose-colored glasses, and we look at other, at, at other people, and we, we're able to see all their shortcomings. But we don't see our weaknesses. We judge ourselves by, you know, our good intentions. But we don't follow through. Are you here? Well, I got good intentions. Well, yeah, but what about your actions? And so, so we have a tendency of looking at ourselves better then we look at somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, anybody ever read that book, um, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie? Uh, anybody ever read it? Let me see your hands. Okay, we got one people, two people. It's a good book. You probably have some friends. The rest of you guys don't have any friends out here. But anyway, <laughs> I got no friends, Pastor. Everybody hates my guts, right? <laughs> How to Win Friends and Influence People. And, and it's a good book. And it's, it's not like a, you know, the guy that wrote it. It's about how to deal with people. And uh, in, in, the, in the very beginning of the chapter of the book, he talks about Two Gun Craw Crawley, I believe that was his name. And he was a guy that, that shot down a police officer. He was making out with his girlfriend. And he had a gun. And a police officer tapped on, his, on, on the window in his car. And he turned around and shot the, guy, shot the police officer and killed him. And then it, it, he ended up, you know, being chased down by the police and ended up in a, in a building, um, you know, shooting at the police. And, and they're shooting back at him. And, and, and now he has bullet holes and he's, he's, uh, he, he, he's all shot up. And he's up in, in this building. He's writing a letter. And he says, I'm really a kind man, you know. <laughs> you know, people just misunderstand who I am, you know. After he shot this one police officer, <laughs> Are you, I'm really, you see, we, we look at ourselves as being better. I'm really, you know, Al Capone. He never looked at himself as being a bad guy. You know, he was, a, anybody ever heard of Al Capone? He, he looked at himself as a public ben, benefactor. He, he looked at himself as he was helping the, the person, you know, he, it was prohibition and he was getting, helping people get beer, right? So he looked at, you know, helping people. But, but really, he was a murderer and a killer, but he didn't see himself that way. You see, are you hear what I'm saying to you? Sometimes we don't see ourselves being, we, we, even, the, even the little sin that we do, we, we think it's not that big a deal. To God, sin is a big deal. Amen. And you know in sin, S-I-N, you know what the middle letter in sin is? It's I, right? 
So sin is all about I. You know what the middle letter of, pro, uh, uh, of pride is, right? P-R-I-D-E, the middle letter in pride, I. Amen. Look at James, I'm learning stuff today. <laughs> and so we need to be very careful that, um, that we're not looking at ourselves like we're all that. And, um, and I know this is going back to my mercy message last week, but we need to be uh, sowing love. And, and so here he's saying that if somebody did us wrong, if somebody did us down and dirty, that we should, actually, we should pray for them. Amen. And, uh, you know, the Bible talks about that. Let's go to Matthew 6. Let's look at this. Because there are some things, where, you know, you may be thinking, today, well, pastor, you mean I can't do anything if somebody does me wrong? And No, you can do something. You need to talk to that person. The Bible talks about talking to that person. And, uh, and uh, so we need, we need to talk to that person, make sure that that person... Um, uh, Jesus talks about if somebody does you wrong, you talk to them, and, and if they don't straighten out, then you go to the church, and you talk to, you know, you get a couple witnesses, and then if that doesn't work, and they don't straighten out, then you treat them as an unbeliever. You just, you just stay away from them. Wow, it's quiet in this Methodist church today. In other words, you, you try to get it right. Jesus says, you know, we should be trying to get our relationships right. Some of us, you know, we, got, we have some relationships that we know are wrong, that, or we know that either we got something against them, or we know that they have something against us. And we need to go to them and get it right. You may not even know what you did, but you know they, they, they've gone cold on you. They went dark. Anybody know what I'm talking about? In other words, you call them, they don't answer anymore. It's like you call them up, and it's like, your phone number is taken out of their directory. Like, what did I do, you know? We need, we, need to be, we need to be the peacemakers. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. Amen? We need to be the, we need to be the bigger person. Even if we miss it, we don't, if we don't even know that why we offended somebody, we need to go and try to get it right. Because I'm going to say this, it's hindering your faith. Amen. See, the Bible says this, if you have a gift and that you're going to bring to the altar, and if you remember that somebody has something against you, what, Pastor? Yeah, yeah, if, some, somebody, if, you, if you think, well, somebody, somebody really doesn't like me. Maybe it's because I did something, right? But, but you're giving a gift. And all, he said, don't give that gift yet. Because if you want a blessing on the gift that you give into the altar or, or that your tithes and your offerings, if you want your tithes and offerings blessed, then you, make, you need to make sure your, your relationships are right. And he said, before you give that gift, go to that person and try to get it right. You know, just say, hey, listen, I don't know how... I don't know, you, for some reason, I'll walk around and you get a scowl on your face. You look at me like you want to kill me. And I don't know why. You don't, you don't have to say it that way, you know, because you could offend them even more. <laughs> why you got that scowl on your face? You, know, you don't want to push people's buttons. But, you know, you know, go there humbly and say, listen, I don't know what I, I, I must have done something because it seems like you're angry with me. And have I done something to, to, to cause a rift in our relationship because you're not answering your phone? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm off. I'm, 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 I'm not on your Christmas card list anymore, and um, you know, I didn't get my Christmas card this year, and uh, you know, and I got some black roses for my birthday. I don't know what's going on. What's going on? You know, <laughs> and you need to go to them. You need to go to them and find out because you may not know. You know, there's times. Have you ever, have you ever done something you didn't realize that you hurt somebody? You had no idea. And, 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 and you found out through somebody else, you know, they don't really like you that much. Why? Because of your cocky attitude. You know, I don't know. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? We need to try to get these things right. And what happens, I'm going to say this a lot of times, this happens. When you know somebody that doesn't like you, what are you doing? Well, I'm not going to like them either. What's not to like? You know, I mean, I'm trying to do everything right. And so what we do is we shun that person. Well, if they don't like me, I don't like them either. If they're, if they, if they're ignoring me, I'll ignore them too. Speak to the hand. <laughs> you know? And are we, and I'm talk, can, can I just talk a little bit? Isn't that how, how we do it? Don't we do it like that, guys? Come on. Don't we just kind of, well, if they're going to ignore me, I don't know what I did wrong, but psh, forget about it. As they say in New York, forget about it. Forget about it. I'm not going to worry about it. You know? But listen, 
Listen, what we need to do is we need to extend love. Listen, they may not give you love, but you pray for them and you extend love. If they stay standoffish and they keep their walls up, it's not on you anymore, baby. You tried. You gave it a shot. And then you, then you do what the Bible says, if at all possible, stay at peace. And maybe staying at peace is staying, you know, keeping your distance. And maybe we just might need to keep our distance. You know, guys, when you upset your wives and, and you know you did something wrong and you're trying to get in their face and say, hey, baby, I love you. And they say, get out of here. You know what I'm saying? The wife doesn't want you just, you know, kissing up. Oh, you know you've done wrong and you're trying to be nice and sweet and you haven't asked forgiveness. Am I talking in here? And then the wife is like standoff. He's like, don't even go there with me. You know, I got the couch all made up. You're sleeping there tonight. Right? Maybe not really, but, you know, she's on her side and you're on your side, right? Or you used to stay up a little later to watch TV. Am I talking today? We need to walk in love. Look at your neighbor and say, walk in love. Amen. So, listen, even Peter and even the disciples, you know, they were, you know, um, uh, you, you have, when you have a group of people, you're going to always have clashing personalities. You're going to have people that you're not even, you may not really care for. I don't, don't want to use the word, I don't want to use a strong word, like, you don't like. Maybe you just don't care for their personality. That sounds a little better, doesn't it? There's going to always be people you're just not going to care for their personality. But, you know, you don't have to hang out with them, but still walk in love. You know, have some, you know, give some allowances. Maybe they went through some things that that's why they, they act a little weird. You know, some people act a little weird. Probably you too. And, uh, I, you know, I remember I was in church and, and, uh, and I was, this, this was years ago when I was assistant pastor. And this one person that came to church and got on my last nerve. I said, Lord, what is that person here for? You know, I would, you know, can, can I just be honest? Amen. Why is they here? They're getting on my last nerve. Every time I looked at them, and they, they would just do things that would just get on. Anybody know what I'm talking about when you go to church? Yeah. Don't act all pious in here. Right, yeah. He said, yeah, that person's always doing that, you know. Uh -huh. yeah. why, do, why do they have to do that, you know? And, and uh, I was like, Lord, why is that person here? I mean, why do they exist? <laughs> Don't look so pious. This was years ago. Now I'm walking in a little bit more love, okay? God's working on Pastor Dave. And, and, but uh, I said, why are they here? Why? Can't you fix them, Lord? And uh, you know what? I need to be fixed. I'm the one that needed to be fixed. I, my, my critical attitude, I needed, my, I needed to be fixed. Those people, and I, I, sometimes God will put sandpaper people to, 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 to really to smooth out our rough edges. You know, we're more rougher than we think we are. Amen. We think we're all that. But a lot of times we need some people in our life to smooth us out. And, uh, hello, that might wake somebody up. We might not be as smooth as we think we are. And, uh, and so I said, Lord, what is that? And then, Lord, then the Lord revealed something about this person, a redeeming quality about this person that I never saw before. And I said, wow, that person has a gift. You know, like, surprise, surprise. And that person, God, you can use this person. I never saw it that way. There is a reason for this person to be on planet Earth besides getting on my nerves. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? And so, again, it goes back to relationship. You know, uh, Peter, you know, was talking to the master. And Peter said to, uh, Jesus, asked Jesus a question. said, how many times should I forgive my brother? Should I? And he was, and he was being serious. said, Jesus, I want to know. Uh, seven times, and then you cut him off. You cut him up at the knees. Uh, I, this is this is Pastor Dave's, you know, uh, interpretation. Thank you, rendition of it. And you know, is it seven times? And after seven times, you can just right. And Jesus said, "Yes, my brother." After seven times, take him down. No, he didn't say that. Peter was hoping, though. <laughs> Peter was hoping that that Jesus said, "Yes, my brother. That's what you need to do. That's hell. That's rain hellfire on him." Right now, who is it? Is it John? Is it John? <laughs> you know they got on each other's nerves. 
You know they were getting on each, you know, because when the mother comes to Jesus and said, Jesus, can I talk to you? I know you, all your other disciples are trying to volley for, for a position in your kingdom here. She didn't say it that way. Of course, this is my rendition too. But can my two sons be on, sit on your right and left when you make into the kingdom? And the Bible said the other disciples were like, oh, I can't believe she would ask that. What mother wouldn't want their son sitting on the right and left side of Jesus, right? Come on, moms. Amen. Amen. What, what, what moms said? And, uh, and, of course, she said, well, it's not for, for him to choose who sits on his right and left side. But, but bottom line uh, is this, that, that, we, that, that Peter was, was having an issue with somebody in the group. And Peter said, how many times should I, should I ask forgiveness? And Jesus said, uh, I will say to you not seven times, but seven times seventy. And Peter, and Peter like on, what? Are you serious? Seven times 70. And can, has anybody ever multiplied seven times 70 in here? That's a lot of times, 490. And I think he was saying, really, Jesus was actually saying uh, an innumerable number of times. In other words, that we need to keep forgiving. Just like you need to keep walking in faith every day in this walk. That it, this walk is a faith walk. Every day you need to learn to walk in love and forgiveness. You know, the... The uh, prayer we taught on the Lord's Prayer a few months back. And in the Lord's Prayer, in the makeup of the Lord's Prayer, it says, Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass. Again, notice it's connected. Lord, forgive me as I forgive others. You know, Jesus, Jesus went and went a little further and said, Listen, I'm going to tell you about this guy that let me, let me give you a parable. Jesus would talk about parables, and he was talking about love. And he said, listen, there was this man that owed, owed a lot of money to this king. And uh, it, was, say, say it, was, it was like millions of dollars. And this king was about ready to, or this lord was about ready to throw him into jail because he couldn't pay. So he went to the king, and he started begging the king. He said, please, I'll pay you back. Please forgive me of this big debt. Please forgive me. And, uh, and the king had pity. And, and uh, had, had, rem had mercy on this, on this man that owed him millions of dollars and said, listen, I'm going to forgive you of this debt. You're free of it. And that man walked out free. He owed millions of dollars. Could you imagine? How many people owe some credit cards in here? Wouldn't it be, be, be nice if you just went to the bank and said, will you please just wipe off my debt? And they said, okay, you have mercy. We're going to wipe it off and we're not even going to put it on your credit report. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Amen. Amen. And, uh, well, some people are doing that. It's called bankruptcy. But I won't go there. It's a financial strategy, Pastor. A financial strategy. Okay, I know. Some people get over their heads. But uh, I heard about this one story about this one girl that got over her head in, in finance. This is a side issue. Can I, can I talk about this one story? And I heard that she, she actually put up some, uh, something on a website. I don't know if it was, if it was Facebook or Twitter. I think it may have been Facebook. But she said, I've got in debt. I'm in college, and I got in debt. I really made some mistakes. And I, and she, I think she set up a, 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 an account with a pay. And she asked people, if you, please have mercy on me and help me pay my debt off of $30,000 that I ran up. And people started giving money into her little website, and she got all her debts paid off. Wow. See, that might be an idea. But anyway, let's go back here. I'm thinking, wow, she made her bed. She ought to live in it. You know, she spent all her money. Yeah, but, but there's mercy out there, amen? And God will have mercy on us, and we need to have mercy on other people. And so Jesus said seven times 70, and then he talks about this, this king, and this king forgives his debt, millions of dollars, and then this guy sees another guy that, he, that, that owed him, like, you know, I'm going to say maybe 70 or 80 bucks. And he sees this guy on the street, and he said, you owed me $70, you know, last you know, week I loaned it to you. And, and you said you were going to pay me on Monday. It's Wednesday. Where's my money? And the guy said, listen, I don't have it. And then, he, then that, that guy started, you know, grabbed the guy by the lapel, started shaking. He said, you're going to give me my money or I'm going to throw you in jail. And this guy is begging him, please, it's only $70. <laughs> please, give me more time. He said, I'm not going to give you no time. You're, I called the police. The police threw him in jail. And, uh, but you know what? The king heard about this. The king that forgave this guy of millions heard about what this guy did to this other guy that owed him $70. And he said, get this guy back in here. 
So he, he called, he got his, uh, you know, he got his guards to go pick this guy up and said, listen, I heard about this. And I'm going to throw you in with the torturers. And you're going to be tortured until you pay every pen, last penny. Jesus, Jesus is talking about, about torture here. So what is that saying? That's saying if we're not, if we maintain an attitude of unforgiveness, it will be torture in our lives. It, in other words, we will be tortured. I mean, it, we, we will have a hard time sleeping because every time we think about that person, we want to think about how, you know, we think about how bad they did us. And, and, and it will cause us to have problems with our health. It will cause us to have problems with our relationships with other people. It will cause us to have problems. It will be tormenting. And we're holding something against somebody else. And, but God, but see, what, see this, the, the moral of the story is this, is that the man, the king, represents King Jesus. And, and that, that, that Jesus, actually you could even say represents Father God. And Father God forgave us for all our, see, we don't look at how bad we are. We, we always compare ourselves. Well, I wasn't even that bad when I was a sinner, you know. But even if, even if you weren't that bad morally as a sinner, you were still a sinner lost without God's mercy. You were no matter, you know, the, even if you were the best sinner, the best sinners are still making it into hell. The, the most moral sinners are still making it into hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Just because you're a better sinner than another sinner <laughs> doesn't mean you're going to escape the fires of hell. Well, I'm a, I'm a better moral, I'm, a, I'm, more, I'm morally upright. Yeah, but see, if you're a sinner, you're a sinner. You, you, it doesn't matter how morally upright you are, you're not, you can't be that good to make it into the kingdom without the blood of Jesus. Amen. And it's the blood of Jesus that paid for the price of all our sins, you know, from every sin that we have ever committed. Amen. And even the sins that we're going to commit next week. So the blood covers us in the past, in the present, and in, and in the future. Amen. So the blood is always working. And so God forgave us of our sins. We want God's mercy and forgiveness. So we need to sow mercy and forgiveness to others. And so Jesus, Jesus was saying, listen, if you don't start walking in love and forgiveness, the torturers will come torture you. Who are the torturers? Well, it's the demonic spirits. Demons will come. You know, they're designed to come out to, you know, demons will torture Christians. That are, listen, it's not that God wants these demons is that we open the doors for demons to come in. Nobody likes to talk about demons. <laughs> Pastor, can't we just talk about love and angels? Are there demons out there's demons out here? Yeah. Amen. They're you know they're they're working in men. They're working through people Amen. to get to get the agenda of what Satan wants done on the earth. Yeah. The Bible yeah. says that that uh, Satan is the God of this world system. Yeah. So he's working through people. But, but listen, he doesn't have to work through a Christian, but a Christian can allow the enemy to work through, through them. Like one person said, can a, can a Christian have a... They were asking this one minister that's been around for th you know, many years and walked in faith and um, did the faith thing. And, and the Christian asked, can a, can a, uh, asked the pastor, the seasoned pastor, can a Christian have a demon? And the pastor says, the Christian can have anything he wants. It's quiet in this Baptist church. <laughs> in other words, unforgiveness will open doors for the enemy to come in. Amen. And it will cause a root of bitterness. The Bible says that will, defile, that will defile many. In other words, we need to be careful that we're not letting offense bring us down. Amen. See, the Bible says in the end days, people, you know, they ask Jesus, when is it all going to wind up? And, when, is, and when, are, when are you coming back to set up your earthly kingdom? And Jesus said, you know, in the end days, he said, people will get offended. People will start hating one another. But hopefully it's not the Christian. You know, offense causes people to leave church, leave relationships, go down the wrong road of destruction. Offense. Amen. We need to be careful that we're not um, allowing offense to bring us down. And we need, a, we need to uh, allow the love of God. We, you know, understand what God has done for us. And, and the love that he has bestowed upon us. And we need to start walking in love towards our brothers and sisters. Amen. You know, I'm not saying allow them to 
you know, hurt you again in a situ certain situation, you can set up perimeters where they don't do it again. Like if you let somebody borrow money, they never pay it back, don't give them more money. Because that's, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me, right? So, you know, you don't do that twice. You, you understand people's weaknesses, and you don't go there. See, God, God's not saying get, you know, allow yourself to be walked on all the time. He's not saying that, but he's saying you still can forgive the person. Is this helping anybody today? So I believe there's people in here today. That are dealing with offense. You might be dealing with offense. You don't even realize it with God. You know, it's vertical love and horizontal. You might not realize that you're offended with God. You're, you're angry with God because maybe something didn't happen the way you thought it was supposed to happen. You prayed a prayer and it didn't work out the way you thought it was going to work out. And you thought that God did not hear your prayer or, or not listening to you. And you're a little irritated with God this morning. Boy, it's quiet in this church today. <laughs> Or you might be irritated with somebody that's done something to you and you're holding an offense. You're holding every time you think about that person, you just think, oh, man, I, you know, you think about what they've done to you and you have an emotion. You have a feeling attached to what they did. That's how you know you're still offended. If there's if there's an emotion still attached to that thing that happened, an emotion of a negative emotion. If that negative emotion still kind of rises up, your, your stomach gets a little tight when you think about it. You might still be in unforgiveness. Hello. And so we got to let some of these things go if we're going to move forward in God. We're going to have to let some. You see, it's all about the relationship, our relationship with God. And, and listen, we can't get offended with God. You know, John the Baptist, and, and uh, he, he was thrown in jail. And um, he was the one that baptized Jesus. He was Jesus' cousin. And what happened was he was in jail and he... And some of his people were talking to him in jail and sent word to Jesus. And some of his disciples came to Jesus one day and said, John is asking, are you the one or should we look for another? Now, John is the one that said, this is the Lamb of God that, that, that took away the, 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 the sin of the world, right? John had a revelation, baptized Jesus. He knew at the very beginning, but then he's in jail. He's under pressure. Jesus is still out there preaching, has this big ministry. And maybe John may have been offended that, that, that Jesus didn't come and release them. Because he, he you know, he, he was in jail. Now, I'm just kind of thinking about this. And he sent his disciples. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, tell John that the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, and blessed is he that does not get offended because of me. He said that to John. Now, John was a mighty prophet. But even a mighty prophet could get offended. Think about that. You know, he was, he, he said, is there, are you the one or should we look for another? That's offense. Because God already told him he was the one. Yeah, same thing today. Uh, uh, pa Lord, you sure that guy's supposed to be my pastor? <laughs> is he the one or should I look for another? <laughs> is he the one or should I look for another? Because he stepped on my toes. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I never thought he was the one anyway, you know. And your life goes down the toilet when you leave. <laughs> Maybe he was the one, you know. Maybe he was a, the shepherd that was supposed to be over me. Maybe I need a strong shepherd, not somebody that tells me I'm nice, that I never do anything wrong, that I shouldn't ever straighten up. Just keep telling me I'm nice, I'm nice, I'm nice, no matter what I do. I don't have one of those ministries. <laughs> I, though that's the nice thing. I have a bulldozer ministry. I gotta bulldoze some things over. Amen. Amen. So listen, we need to walk in love. Let's bow our heads. Father, I just thank you for your mercy today, and I thank you for your goodness. And I know there's people here that I know, Father, that they, they've been they've been hurt, that 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 people have done some wrong things to them and just unjust. But Father, you are the judge of all judges. You're the one that will make it right. Vengeance is yours, the Bible says. So, Father, I just thank you. Maybe you're out here. Maybe there's somebody that did you wrong, and you just need to release that today. Maybe to, just raise your hand. If that, that you just acknowledge God with every head bowed and every eyes closed, nobody looking around, just between you and God, just raise, I'm not going to call you up, but you know there's somebody you need to let, you need to forgive. 
I see those hands. Thank you. You, you know you need to let go of that. I, I see those hands. I want you to, to, to pray this prayer after me. Maybe um, because you, you need to learn to forgive these people. Amen? Because it's going to hinder your walk. And maybe you're the offendee. Maybe you're the one that offended somebody. You need to go and get it right. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to do that this week. Get it right. Maybe you need to write a letter. Maybe the person's already dead, but you just need to just say, listen, I forgive you. You know, whatever it takes, but you need to release it. Say this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I desire to walk in love and forgiveness. And Father, I'm making a decision to forgive this person from my heart. Father, bless them and curse them not. And Lord, I'm releasing them to you. Now help me heal my heart over this matter. In Jesus' name, amen.